Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the accumulated earnings tax and the personal holding company tax. Both of these topics deals with taxes, taxes imposed by the government. Why? For what purpose? Well, the government don't want you to accumulate too much money in a corporation without taking them out. Well, why? For what purpose? Well, let's historically, let's take a look at our income tax structure. Before 2008, corporation, the highest tax rate was 35%. So if you're a corporation, 35%. As individual, your tax rate could range from zero up to 39.6%. So if you're in the highest tax bracket, and we're here we're dealing, we are, we are concerned with the people with the highest tax bracket. It was 396 So individuals had incentive to do what? To operate as a corporation, pay on their earning 35%, and obviously don't take the earnings out. Why? Because if you take them out, you'll be taxed again. But we're going to see later that some people might be able to keep those earnings. But the point is, as a corporation, you pay less taxes. The difference was small, approximately 5%. Now, corporate tax rate is, guess what? Corporate tax rate is flat 21%. Notice the difference now is approximately 16%. So now, individuals, they have every incentive to do what? Operate as a corporation and never takes the money out. Why? Because they can pay, they will pay only 21%. And as long as they don't take it out, they don't have to pay taxes on dividend. So as a result of this, as a result of this situation, affluent individual and rich people, simply put, may consider utilizing the corporate structure as a way to do what? To reduce their tax obligation. So what did the government do in response? Hold on a second. We're, we, we know you're up to this. We're going to impose on you the accumulated earnings tax or the personal holding company tax. So this is what we're going to be discussing in this session. Now you might be saying, hold on a second. Well, the company pays 21%. How about when the owner takes the money out? Aren't we subject to double taxation? Well, let's talk about double taxation. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So, you, when the owner takes the money out, they have to pay taxes again. But do owners have to take the money out? They don't have to. The owners of the corporation, they don't have to take the money out. What can they do? They can keep it. They can defer the earnings. So hold on a second. So they make the profit, they keep it in the company, and they will never take it out. That does not make any sense. Well, for one thing, the longer they keep it, the more they save. Because the longer they keep it, the longer they defer for paying taxes because of the time value of money. So if you make $100,000 today and keep it in the corporation, don't take it out, well, you're saving taxes now because you don't have to take it out. So in the future, you have savings by not paying taxes. That's one reason. Also, as you keep your money in the corporation itself, the value of the corporation goes up. If you have the if the company is, is worth more, the stock value is worth more. And guess what? All in all, here's what some people would even go as far as what? Don't take it out. And when they die, when they pass away, we're all going to die. We're all going to pass away at some point. The shareholder passes away with an appreciated stock. Remember, they kept the money in the company, and as a result, the stock price went up. Now, when their kids, when their children take that and inherit, this, inherit the stock, they inherit the stock as a step-up basis. It means they inherit appreciated stock to avoid income taxation because you will take the fair market value, which, which is high. So the individual drove the stock price, stock price up high, passed away, passed the stock price, high stock price to their kids, that's already appreciated, and you don't pay taxes on that transfer. Why not? Okay. Also, we're going to learn later about the estate exclusion. Well, it's in the millions of dollars. What, what you do is you pass those assets to your kids, and they're excluded from paying estate taxes. So for all these reasons, there's a reason 
for the government to impose certain taxes, certain taxes to do what? To get their money now, rather than let, letting you keep in it for later. Okay, so by accumulated earnings within a corporation and subsequently transferring the stock upon death, double taxation can be entirely avoided. And this is what the government feared the most, where you keep it. You keep paying every year 21% on your earnings. Never take it out to be double taxed, because if you take it out, you'll have to pay, you know, taxes on the dividend. You don't take it out, you keep it. So what did the government do? Well, the government came with those two taxes that we need to discuss which is one is called accumulated earnings tax and the other one called personal holding company. So what happened is we're going to we're going to make you pay taxes on your retained undistributed income. Simply put retained earnings. Now if you don't know what retained earnings is, let me real quick show you what we are talking about here. So when the company generate a profit, when the company generate revenues first, they incur expenses as a result they they generate net income or net profit. Initially the profit is sparked into retained earnings. Basically, we're keeping the earnings, which is undistributed income. And at some point, if we want to distribute the earning, we can. If we, if you don't want to keep it, we can distribute some of the earning as dividend. But what the government is fearing, you never, you never distribute it as dividend to be taxed. You keep it in retained earnings. That's the reason. So what happened? The government says, look, you keep too much in retained earnings and undistributed profit, you are subject to the either accumulated earnings tax or personal holding company tax. There is no way around that. So let's talk about the accumulated earnings tax first. How does it work? Well, the company is going to impose a 20% on corporate earnings that are accumulated without a valid business reason. Simply put, if you're accumulating too much money, too much money means too much earnings, and you're not distributing this earning, well, we're going to tax you. Now, the burden of proving, providing that you have a reason to keep this money lies with you. So if you have a reason to keep the money, well, valid reason, then you have to show it to the IRS. You say, look, I, I should not be paying taxes because X, Y, Z. And you have to show it, you have to prove it. So here's what happened. Businesses can offset this tax with a minimum credit of 250. So simply put, you can keep $250,000 in in retained earnings, undistributed profit, if you're a service corporation, 150. So that's fine. So they're saying this is how much you can keep. If you want to keep more, you have to have a business legitimate reason. Earnings beyond the minimum credit, you have to have a reason. What are what could be some reasons for the company to keep additional earnings? Well, I want to expand business expansion. Well, I have a plan to replace my assets. I need it for working capital. Working capital means to operate my business on a day-to-day -day basis. I might have a lawsuit for product liability loss. I need to pay my debt. Self-insurance, reasonable amount of self-insurance. You cannot say, well, I need this money to insure myself against losses, a reasonable amount. Loans to suppliers and customers. If you need that money for those reasons, those are considered what we call legitimate, legitimate purpose, so you can keep it. However, if you are, if the IRS will ask you, you have to prove it. However, loans to shareholders. If you say, I'm going to keep this money because I'm going to need some extra money to loan to my owners. You can do that. Unrelated property business investment. So you want to buy investment that's unrelated to your business. I'm sorry, you can do that. Unrealistic hazards slash contingencies that are not considered valid business deeds. You'd say, you know what? Oh, I might have a fire next year. And as a result, I'm going to have losses. You can do that right? Or I'm going to have a lawsuit. Uh, you, you, you cannot have those unrealistic contingencies. What, what, what can you do to kind of get the government off your back? Distribute the money in dividend or pay the tax. Either pay the tax or dis distribute it in dividend because if you distribute in a dividend, the, in dividend, well, the owners have to pay taxes. Now, once you do pay the taxes on it, it's no longer taxable when you distribute it because the tax was already paid. Okay, this is what you have to do. So this is the accumulated earnings tax. Let's talk about another similar tax, personal holding company tax. What is this purpose of this tax? Well, to discourage individuals with high marginal tax rates, aka rich individual from using corporation to shield certain type of passive income. What does that mean? It means if you have a lot of money, a rich individual, what you will do, you will take your money and that money, especially if it's coming from passive income, and you will create a corporation and you put that money in the corporation itself, and the corporation would create the profit. And now the corporation 
is generating the profit. Therefore, the profit is being taxed on a corporate level, which is how much? 21%. And you will keep it there and we'll have the same story as the that rich individual on the prior slide. Until they die, then the asset is passed to their heirs and they will avoid paying any uh, double taxation. So that's the whole purpose. So the personal holding company was initially targeting what they called incorporated pocketbooks. Who are they? People who are in the entertainment industry, construction industry. The tax aim, the purpose of this tax, is where individual place the securities. Securities means stocks, bonds, and a corporation, allowing the stock to appreciate without paying dividend. That's how it works. Now, similar to the accumulated earnings tax, the personal holding company tax also applies 20% to do what? To compel you to do what? Distribute the earnings to shareholders. Why? Because once you distribute it, you have to pay the tax. Simply put, the government wants their tax now. If you want to keep it, you can keep it if you choose, pay us the tax. Or pay it so the individual who gets the money pay the taxes. Someone will have to pay the tax. Now, can both taxes be imposed at the same time? Well, no. The IRS cannot enforce both taxes, the personal holding company tax and the accumulated earnings tax in the same year. To be subject to the personal holding company tax, a company must meet certain criteria. Personal holding company, it's just specific criteria. One, more than 50% of the outstanding stocks must be owned by five or fewer individuals. So more than 50% of the company is owned by five or less individuals, so a small group of people and specifically during the latter half of the year, the last six months of the year. And plus, so we're talking about small group of people owning the company and, and notice the end, 60% of the income for that corporation is coming from passive sources. What is passive sources? You own stocks. Stocks pay you dividend. You own bonds. Bonds pay you dividend. Uh, interest, I'm sorry. You, you, have, you have buildings, office buildings, rents, royalties or special personal service income, like accountant, lawyers, doctors, where the person is involved. If that's the case, you are a personal holding company, and therefore you are subject to that tax. Well, how can you eliminate this tax? Well, easy. Either distribute the money or pay the tax. Just like the accumulated earnings tax, the personal holding company tax can be diminished or eliminated by distributing the dividend. Just distribute the money. That's what they want. Why? Because they want the receiver of that money to pay the taxes. You cannot shield, you cannot keep that money and defer paying taxes on it or even avoid, theoretically you can avoid, if you wait long enough, if you can afford to wait long enough, avoid paying taxes to the government. The government wants their money. And that's the main reason for the accumulated earnings tax and the personal holding company tax. You can't avoid taxes, you gotta pay them. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional lectures, MCQs, true false, that's going to help you, whether you are an accounting student, a CPA candidate, or an enrolled agent. Accounting and the CPA is important in your career. Invest in yourself. Good luck and stay safe.